Welcome back everyone. Today's video is going to be about the basics of medical physics. The first thing we are going to talk about is structure of matter. This video is based on uh, FM Kant's The Physics of Radiation Therapy. Let's start. Now let me give you a small introduction on the structure of matter. All matter is composed of individual entities called elements. Any element like fluorine, uh, I am just giving an example like carbon, like bromine, chlorine, sodium. These are all called as elements. Each element is distinguishable from others by physical and chemical properties of its basic component. What is its basic component? The atom. So uh, back in those days, the atom was thought to be the smallest and the indivisible particle of matter. No matter what you do, you can't divide it. But now with the advent of technology, it is seen that the atom is not the only uh, indivisible particle. You can divide the atom into many particles, which I will discuss in subsequent slides. So it, uh, it can be it can be now divided into the smaller components. Each atom consists of small central core, the nucleus, where most of the atomic mass is located, and surrounding a cloud of electrons moving in orbits around the nucleus. So let me talk about the radius. The radius is the distance from the center point. The radius of the atom is approximately 10 to the power minus 10. The nucleus has a much smaller radius, about 10 to the power minus 50. Okay. The properties of the atom depend on the constitution of the nuclei and the surrounding electrons. If you take any element like cobalt or tungsten, the properties of the atom completely, completely depends on the constitution of the nuclei and the surrounding electrons. Now let's take a closer look at the nucleus. The nucleus consists of two things, the proton and the neutron. The proton is positively charged, neutron is neutrally charged, means it has no charge. Okay? The electron is negatively charged. The electron's charge is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. And if you take the, if you take like compare both protons and the electrons, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Okay. An atom is completely specific. Any atom, the formula X, like if you replace X with a chemical symbol, let's say carbon, carbon is C, or cobalt, CO, or like magnesium, Mg, or like lead, Pb, like that. Now C is 2. A and Z. A is the mass number which is defined as the number of nucleons. Nucleons is the other name which you give to neutrons and protons in the nucleus. And Z is the atomic number. What is atomic number? It denotes the number of protons in the nucleus. So if an, uh, if an element or if an atom of the element is represented in such a manner, it's called a nucleate. Okay. Now let's classify atoms. On the basis of different proportions of neutrons and protons in the nuclei, atoms have been classified into the following categories. Isotopes. What are isotopes? Nuclei with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Okay. Isotones. What are isotones? Same number of neutrons but different number of protons. Okay. Now let's discuss about isotopes. Atoms with the same number of nucleons but different number of protons. Nucleons is protons plus neutrons. Isomers are atoms containing the same number of protons as well as neutrons. So if you consider isomers, they represent identical atoms except they differ in their nuclear energy state. Let's take for instance stable elements in the low atomic range. If you see in the low atomic range, they are equal number of protons and equal number of neutrons. So if you take the ratio, any ratio, if you take any ratio, equal numbers is, is equal to 1. Okay. Now let's take uh, like the proton number at 20. If you take a closer look at this graph, you can see that there are two lines here. One is of stable nuclei and one is a hypothetical nuclei where n by t ratio is 1 even if the proton number is greater than 20. You can see there's a skew, there's a change in the um, in both the graphs after the proton number crosses 20. Okay, 
as z increases beyond 20 the neutron to proton ratio for stable nuclei becomes greater than 1 and increases now we can compare nuclear stability with odd or even numbers so they took around 300 isotopes the one with the even numbers are stable more than the odd numbers but i'm not telling that odd numbers are unstable only four stable nuclei have odd numbers of protons and neutrons so let's discuss about atomic mass and energy density mass of atoms and atomic particles are conveniently given in terms of unified atomic mass unit. So in order to talk about anything related to the mass of atoms, you need to have a defined unit that is U. Okay. The average mass of atoms of an element in an sample is expressed in terms of U. It is also known as relative atomic mass or atomic weight. Okay. So let's take the definition. It is defined as the 1 by 12th of the mass of carbon atom. So it is assigned as 12 U. Now we are coming to another important constant. It is called as Avogadro number. Avogadro number is uh, it's like constant. It doesn't change. Okay. So it is defined as 6.02 or 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 atoms per gram atomic weight. Now let's talk about mass energy equivalence. The basic unit of energy is Joule. But in terms of electrons, we need to introduce a new term called electron volt. Electron volt is defined as the kinetic energy acquired by an electron in passing through a potential difference of 1 volt. If we still want to convert it into joules, 1 electron volt is equal to 1 volt into 1.6020 10 to the power minus 19 volts. That is equal to 1.6020 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. Now let's talk about some useful uh, constants. Energy equivalent of an electron at rest E0 is equal to 0 0.511 MeV. Energy equivalent of one uh, atomic mass unit is equal to 931.5 MeV. Okay. Equal mass of particles may also be expressed in units of GeV by C square. This comes from Einstein's equation E is equal to E is equal to M C square. If you substitute it with electron volt, you will get the equation of GeV by C square. So let's talk about atomic energy level. Atomic energy levels are expressed in diagram called energy level diagram. This is a typical example of an energy level diagram. The binding energy in, uh, of the electrons in various shells depends on two things. That is the Coulomb charge and the attraction, the electric attraction between the nucleus and the orbital electrons. So orbital electrons occupy uh, each shell that is an orbit like uh, around, around it. So imagine that this is the nucleus. And these are the shells. Okay, the first shell is the K shell, followed by L, M, and like in that alphabetical order. Okay, now at the last you see some electrons called the valence electrons. These valence electrons are most important because they serve; they are the outer electron responsible for like bonds or like that. So if let's say a random energy like in sort of like photons or anything, it's imparted to these valence electrons and it's raised to a higher energy, this will create a state of atomic instability. The atom will be in an unstable position. So what happens after the energy is uh, like discarded, the, val uh, the valence electron comes to its normal state. In order to return back to its normal state, it has to give out energy. And this energy is in the form of optical radiation. Okay. So let's talk about K shell and L, uh, L, L shell electron, the inner electrons. If energy is imparted to these inner electrons, the, like, it is different from valence electrons because they are nearer to the nucleus and the energy required is so high. The electrons are more tightly bound actually. So if there is a high energy electron, if it is ejected out due to high energy, then there is a high energy radiation given out. And this vacancy is almost uh, instantaneously filled by the electron which is the, uh, the next consequent shell. And this would be uh, accompanied by emission of radiation such as characteristic X-rays or by the ejection of outer shell electron known as the auger electrons. Let's talk about the energy levels in the nucleus. So the nuclear model is similar to the atomic model. So it has been proposed that the energies in the nucleus are arranged in shells. Okay. It emits radiation similar to the electron model discussed in the last slide, but sometimes the radiation is emitted in steps. Now let's discuss about this. 
So let's take for example cobalt. Cobalt is the commonly used uh, element in the radiation therapy. Okay. So this this has been bombarded by neutrons. So it decays to nickel. So what happens is that when it is bombarded, instantly one beta particle is emitted, followed by two gamma uh, gamma ray photons are being emitted with energies of 1.17 MeV and 1.33 MeV. So as a result, as a result of this bombardment, one proton, one electron, and one neutrino are being emitted. This will be discussed in a subsequent video, which I will make about uh, decay of elements. Okay. Now let's talk about elementary particles. So as I discussed in the first, protons, neutrons, and electrons are not the elementary particles. They can be subdivided further. So if we look at the basic elementary particles, there are like let's divide it into two matter and antimatter. So in matter and antimatter, they have quarks and leptons, six quarks and six leptons each. Together, they constitute something called the fermions. Okay, so this is separate. Now coming to another particle known as the bosons. The bosons are the carriers of uh, energy in the field. Okay, so they, uh, they mediate the four forces of nature. These are known as messenger particles. So what are the four forces of nature? Electromagnetic uh, magnetism, that is photon. Strong force, eight gluons. Weak force, W plus W minus and Z naught. For gravity, it's graviton. Graviton is the only thing which is not yet detected. So the difference between fermions and bosons is their spin. Fermions have non-integer spin, like half or like that. Bosons have integer spin, like one, four or like that. Now we are coming to another important concept called the Higgs field. The Higgs field permeates all space and is responsible for giving mass properties to matter. In the universe, this Higgs field permeates everything in the universe. So this Higgs field is responsible for any mass present. The messenger particle for this Higgs field is called the Higgs boson. Now let's talk about electromagnetic fields. So electromagnetic fields are oscillating electric and magnetic fields perpendicular to each other in the direction of energy propagation. So let's say this electric field, this magnetic field and they are facing the direction of the energy propagation. So there are two models proposed for this electromagnetic radiation. One is the wave model and one is the quantum model. So if you take the wave model in waves, you know that waves are like this. So this is how the radiation, electromagnetic radiation travels according to the wave model. So uh, wavelength, that is uh, the distance between one wave, frequency, how frequent is the uh, waves, and velocity, how fast the wave travels. It is given by the uh, equation C, velocity is equal to mu, that is frequency, lambda. Okay. Now, coming to quantum model. Quantum model, it just relates the energy of a photon with its frequency of oscillation. Oscillation is like this, like it just oscillates here. So it is given by the equation E is equal to H nu, where H is Planck's constant. Okay, nu is frequency. If lambda is given in meters, the photon energy in electron volts is given by E is equal to 1.4 into 10 to the power negative 6 by lambda. Okay, so this ends the chapter on structure of matter. Okay, please like this video, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much.